Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first Poets in 30, your Poet Sports Talk Show here in 2014. Tyler Zickel, Happy New Year, buddy. Lance, Happy New Year to you. New Year, new you. I said it before, I'll say it again. Looking very spiffy in the glasses, the slacks, and the tucked-in Skyac conference shirt. Didn't get the memo about the nice attire. I'm wearing jeans and the tennis shoes. So I'm, uh, You know, Rob Coleman's my mentor, so trying to look just like him. Wow, look at you. Uh, early on, we haven't even got one minute into the show, and you're already <laughs> shouting out to Rob Coleman. <laughs> Shout We're going to go Rob. with that. Come on. We'll take it. He's the guy who signs the checks, so That's right. we'll keep it at that. Do what, do what you can. I'm going to an NCAA conference next week with him for, uh, for a week, so uh, we'll see. A convention, NCAA convention. So that should be a fun trip. Are you guys uh, sharing a hotel room, or are you guys? We're not. Home? I'm staying with my parents down there in San Diego. You're so from La Mesa. I'm from La Mesa, so it's real close to downtown. The table. The table. That's what La Mesa yep. means in Spanish. Correct. Yep. Correct. So, hey, a lot of topics going on. The last time we talked, it was right before the holiday break. We discussed the fall sports, the recap, football, volleyball, water polo, being named Sky champions for the second time in the program's history finishing this uh, in the CWA polls, number one for the third time in the program's history, and then making it to the NCAA National Champions Championships for the first time in the program. And this is the first guy championship in Rob Coleman's tenure here in his eight years at the helm of the Poets. So, you know, a lot to be said for the fall sports. A uh, job well done for men's water polo. But we're now into basketball season. You know, we're right in the middle of the season. We have a big sky game tonight against Occidental at 7.30 p.m. for the men. But senior center, all sky performer Tyree Landrum back in the starting lineup after hurting his knee or tearing his meniscus in the second game in the season. He was out for about five games, and now he's played the last four to five games for the Poets, and he's definitely been a presence in the side. What do you think? I think Tyree changes the entire chemistry of this team and it changes the offensive strategy as well we won't even talk about his defensive additions because you add somebody with the body like Tyree Landrum and the aggression of Tyree Landrum which he's able to channel in a positive way you really do change the dynamic on the floor you know in the purple and gold poets classic which took place over the uh, New Year's holiday right before the end of 2013 those were Tyree's first games back you could totally tell that this team played with an entirely new sense of purpose and with some serious vigor. And when the ball runs through Tyree in the paint, there's really nobody in the conference or out who can stop the big man. Correct. I think he's, he's averaging like four blocks a game right now. God, I that's mean, it's filthy. just ridiculous inside. And, I mean, no one has an answer for him. The, well, we played Redlands. We played, Ch we played Chapman already in the conference, and we lost both games. We got dealt a pretty bad loss to Chapman. We were at the game broadcasting that one, but they, he wasn't there playing. Yeah, so they got they got whipped. They did. We can say they, it. They, they really they got did. run up and down the they floor, did. could not sh match any sort of production from both the perimeter or inside. The shooting was off. We had players who had zero points. There were a lot of things wrong with the men's basketball team, but with the addition of Tyree Landrum, as well as some good coaching from Coach Carter and Coach Jensen, there have been the necessary adjustments made to take this team to where they need to be, and then it's up to the players. If they want to win Skyac or go to the playoffs, right. all of these guys have the ability to play to a level that could take them to the next level and beyond. Yeah, and I mean, during the Purple and Gold Poet Classic, they had a huge win against Cal State Maritime, who was coming in nationally ranked in NAIA program. And they were down. They were down big at halftime. They half were down big. You were probably going to say that, but yeah. I had to interrupt. They no, were down so, huge. Yeah. There were. was no momentum going into the break for the Poets, but they came out of the locker room, turned it on, and I had a chance to broadcast that game I felt lucky to be able to call that game because I think that will be a defining moment in this season should it go into the playoffs they can look back and say that win against Cal State Maritime coming from behind it was a double digit lead for Correct. the Keel Haulers it was about 13, that win it, something, yeah, something 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 I've outrageous. seen it was yeah. really bad we thought that the mm -hmm. poor play from conference would continue into Correct. the tournament but they turned it around and that I think Lance you can put it on record I think that's the defining moment here in the 2013-14 okay, campaign. Okay, well, I'm, hope, I'm hoping uh, that is the case here. They had a win against Cal State Maritime and then Pacifica during the Purple and Gold Poet Classic. They then went on the road, and they dropped a heartbreaker to UC Santa Cruz. UC Santa Cruz was 1-13 going to that game, or 1-12, and, and they lost to every Sky X school they had played. The big difference, though, is they lost to those Sky X teams away on the road. They beat us at home when we went up to play them. So that might be a difference, but no matter what, those are the games you have to win. Tyree fouled out late, which kind of hurt us a little bit. But 
they rebounded the next day and they came back to beat UC Merced the following day. So, you know, that was a big game for them to bounce back, you know, and get that win, a quality win for the Poets. And now they're going to have to get back on that win um, train, I would say, um, against Oxy tonight and then Pomona this Saturday. So, you know, I'm using to that tonight to. uh, when I call the game, hopefully with Rob Coleman as he joins me for a color analysis Correct. like yep. he did over the tournament. I'll keep my fingers crossed, but I'm going to use that. Let's get back on the win train. The win train. There you as go. I ran right into the mic with my nose. I'm so excited <laughs> about it. Pardon me right? for the, uh, it's gonna be a great the game scratchy tonight. static there. But it's going to be a great awesome. game. Oxy coming in. Not the best program, but they have a better record than the Poets right now. And the history between our school and their school, it's well documented. For you longtime Poets fans, you know all about the battle for the shoes for the football programs. And I think that rivalry carries over into the respective gyms, specifically here at the GAC tonight. Correct. Now moving on to the other side, you know, for women's basketball. And this is something we haven't really wanted to dwell on a lot before break. But we got to talk about it. No, uh, they, they, they have to be talking about it. They're 0-11 right now. Ugh. And right outside the window here, we got Nick Demuses, David Richardson, and Eric Jennings. Wish we could try and get them in the studios right now. Talk to them about the game. But we'll catch them at a later time. I'm sure they're getting ready for practice. But on the women's side, you know, oh, and look, right outside the window, we got some women's basketball players. So um, talking about them, they're 0-11 this season. You know, it's been a real frustrating year for them. We were talking about this in Coleman's Corner with Rob. What are they going to have to do to get a win? You know, he, as I said, Rob joined me for that analysis uh, during the, the women's game during the tournament. And I will say this. Rob had a lot of good things to say about the program and about where the program is headed. There's been a lot of turmoil in the last couple of years, whether it's coaching or keeping players around, recruiting, whatever it may be. But I think now with some good, solid foundations that have been laid this year, there are some successes in the future. Will that come this season? Fingers crossed. You can only hope so. But I think there's a, nowhere to go but up. Yeah, so a lot to look forward to. We have talked, you know, the losses that they've had have been real tight. They lost 92-85 to Concordia, a very strong team inside. But against Chapman, against Claremont for conference games, they've barely been losing. So they're in all these games, and we were talking about this, Rob and myself, this morning. They are battling. They're in every game. It's not getting blown out by teams really now. So they are in every game, but it's the the inexperience that they're – and they're using a lot of freshmen. The inexperience is really hurting them a little bit. But I think down the stretch, starting tomorrow night, you know, they're going to look to Priscilla Rodriguez, Margot Campos. They're going to look for that young talent to start doing some damage here against Oxy tomorrow, who's not a strong team in the conference, and then against Pomona, who's also not a strong team in the conference. So they can try – and get a couple wins, and the next week they play Caltech. So, I mean, there's a lot going on, and hopefully they'll be able to get onto that win train, like we talked about for men's basketball, and they'll be able to do something here in these next few days, getting a couple wins. And just one final comment. I know we've got a lot on the docket to get to, but one final comment about women's basketball. Starts at the top. It's been good coaching this year, very even-keeled, not a lot of emotion on the sideline, which I think is important in a season such as this where you are winless after, what, 11 games. So as long as the coaching staff can continue to stay the course, let these girls know that there is a vision for this program and it's not going to be like this every season, you're going to keep a lot of those young players who have already committed instead of transferring out or deciding not to play basketball. And that's what it takes. Consecutive seasons of progress will lead to eventual success. So we will wait and see on the women's basketball team, but a lot more to get to so we can move on. Correct. Okay, so next up on our docket, we talked about this in Coleman's Corner this morning. I don't know if we want to touch upon it, but Sky X standings right now. So at the end of the year, we give a big trophy out to the school that finishes with the most points. Usually it's CMS and Redlands at the very top, who usually win it all. And you get 10 points if you win Sky X, you get 9 points for second, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. If you tie, you split the points. So I did not even know about this competition yeah, so it's between a big, the schools. It's a big competition between Why the schools. Why isn't it publicized anymore? I mean, I, I was a student here. I never knew about it when I was a student. Well, it wasn't a big deal because the thing is the conference never really updated the website at all. So right now, if you go on to org, you'll see that it's the 2012-2013 uh, rankings or the positions and standings, and they are not updating it. So Rob and myself, we've talked to the executive director of Skyac, Lauren Huffman, and we've tried to talk to her in updating them after the fall season. So 
we know where we sit right now in the standings so we get fired up and pumped up for the next season be like hey we're only down two points to this team or this program let's try and get those two points here in men's basketball or women's basketball but right now we figured out we had 35 points after the fall season we have exactly 35 points going in right now the where, exact same where do we stand well Right now, we're about fifth, sixth right now in the conference. But it's only within five points. So I mean, that's we can move into course. fourth. We can move into fourth. And we're used to going fifth and sixth. Sure. But imagine, last year, we went four and five in football. This year, we went one and eight. Women's soccer, we won. Well, we didn't win any games in women's soccer last year. But we won a game this year. Don't know how big of a difference that makes. I but don't think it makes any. I don't think that one does. But let's say, let's talk about, you know, women's basketball. We had six wins last year. Right now, we're over. You know, that's a big difference. But you think about men's soccer. They lost in the finals last year. They lost in the first round this season. Okay. So there are some changes, you know, here going on um, in the fall. But right now we have the exact same. Water polo is the one that helped us. We got 10 points for winning Skyak. And that was a huge, that was a big jump from last year. So we're just going to need improvement from the winter sports, which unfortunately doesn't look well, like it's going to happen. No, from it's not from that. Basketball. It's we need a, an improvement from women's sports entirely. Oh, it's okay. always been the men's sports have always fared much better in the sky standings for us. But on the women's side, you have women's basketball who goes over. You have women's soccer that had one win this season. Uh, you have, you know, going on into the spring sports where uh, women's lacrosse last year that only was, had that was a rough season. They had one win also last year. So I mean, the women's sports are going to have to really step up their games, and those coaches are going to have to make some changes in order to help us move up in those standings. And softball seems to carry the torch for the women's softball sports. Softball does. I would argue sports. that's yep. probably the best women's sport we have at Whittier. I in terms would have of a, to agree. In terms of a consistent Correct. performance, I mean, they sure are. you have seasons where other sports will spike, but softball really does put a good product on the field, or Correct. at least a competitive product, every single season. Correct. Softball is going to do some damage this year. They have some great recruits. Women's tennis is going to be a big program that's going to probably, uh, you know, turn some heads as well, I think, because uh, they are they have a lot of young talent, and our tennis program is definitely going to be very, very strong moving forward. So that's about the sky standing. So we're going to try and keep take a look at that after the winter season. And when we come back for another Poets in 30, we're going to take a look at those, you know, coming up after the winter season's over, heading into the spring, and kind of where we fit in the sky standings. But that's going to do it here first for the hot topic section for Poets in 30. We're going to take a quick break for station identification here on kpoetradio.com. We'll be back with you here momentarily. And we're back after that quick little break. We're going to move into the next segment of Poets in 30. It's going to be called Five Good Minutes. Okay, that's going to be the next topic here. We're going to go through a variety of different topics here in the next five minutes. That's all we've got, five minutes. Okay, and we have a lot of topics to go through here. So first one, Deontay Jackson. Will he be here next season for the Poet Football Program? Yeah, and for those of you who may not be familiar with Deontay, he was the number one receiver on the football team this season, transferred here from University of Oregon. He is a one-and-done guy, we just found out. He will Correct. not be returning for the spring semester for academics, and he is looking to move on to the next level, whether that, whether that be the AFL, the NFL, whatever. Uh, we actually were a small part of putting together Deontay's highlight reel that some scouts are going to be taking a look at in the NFL. Uh, also, Joe Waugh and Davis Gerber did a nice job editing those highlights, and also they got all the footage as well. So props to Joe and Davis. But, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a team guy. I was always raised as a team first guy, starting even in T-ball and in Little League. So to me... And Deontay's a nice guy. I've had a chance to talk with him outside of football on a number of occasions. Really nice guy. Uh, couldn't be more humble. That being said, he came here to use this as a springboard to continue his football career after not sticking up at the University of Oregon. So D1 talent, couldn't figure it out in the classroom in terms of commitment and being motivated to succeed academically. And I think that's a major reason why he's decided not to continue his education here at Whittier. But a team is not one guy, and we saw that this year for the football team. He amassed over a thousand yards on the season, uh, double-digit touchdowns, obviously, a couple of standout plays. But again, one guy doesn't make a difference on a team. And while it was fun to watch him play, 
I don't know if he, he's not going to go down in history as a one of the all-time greats for Whittier College, that's for sure. Yeah, so he was a first-team All-Sky performer as a wide receiver. He was named 13 BSN All-American as well. So he's done a lot for the program here. He had 10 touchdowns, had about 1,100, 1,200 yards uh, receiving also on the season. So he's done a great job for us. But, again, we talked about this with Rob this morning about finances. If he's going to be here, he's going to be here for like another three years in order to graduate. That's going to be the issue. That's and a he's great gonna, point. He's going to be point. he's going to be in debt. There's going to be a lot of loans taken out, and that's something you don't like to see. And that's a choice that he decided to take. So he's back up in Oakland training right now, trying to get ready for the draft. Because we've had calls from the San Diego Chargers. I hope he goes there, and because right now. I guess the Chargers are the front runners who want to try and sign him, along with the Cowboys and the Carolina Panthers. So those three teams are looking at him, and they're saying that he is the front runner for a position to be signed as a free agent for their team. They actually want to sign him after the draft is over. Do we know when the draft takes place? Uh, we would have to look. And uh, NFL draft should be coming. Uh, Manziel actually just declared for the draft today, if you didn't see that. I'm but not surprised. I don't like Johnny Manziel. Johnny Football, not high on my list at all. I, everyone talks about him being picked in the top five. There's way better quarterbacks How is he going to see draft. over the offensive linemen exactly. in the NFL? And that attitude of his is definitely not going to fly very far, too. Yeah, that's I, I, that's I gonna feel be, that. He's going to be in check. But I do feel there that. There are going to be great quarterbacks. You know, you got Taj Boyd from Clemson. You got the guy from US, UCF as well, who's a great quarterback as well. He's going to be good. Bridgewater. I mean, there are some great quarterbacks coming out. Uh, but not talking about college football quarterbacks in the <laughs> NFL draft here. But, you know, Deontay Jackson, we'll see what he's going to do. But he has not enrolled in any class in Jan term, has not enrolled in anything in spring. And we'll just see what lies ahead for him. And uh, hopefully wish him all the best. Yeah, absolutely. And That's I, the thing. Yeah. I wanted to interject because I may have seemed like I was mm -hmm. coming down very critically. And, yes, while I do disagree with some of the decisions he's made, at the end of the day, once a poet, always a poet, even for just a semester, so, Correct. like you said, we wished him the best, and it would be great to see a Whittier College mm -hmm. poet it is. holding it down. And he's a great guy, like you talk about. We talk to him all the time, and he's just a great, he's a uh, gentleman, he's a, you know, he's a gr just a great guy overall. And, you know, I wish he could stay for another year. That would be a huge help for our football program. I thought you were going to say gentleman and a scholar, and I, I had to correct I, you there. <laughs> I mean, sorry. I was about to. I'm sorry. That's just I was the about truth. to. I was about to, and I definitely did not because of that. But um, uh, oh, nonetheless, you know, hats off to him for a great season helping the po football program. But moving forward now, men's basketball, do you think they have a chance to make the Sky postseason tournament? Absolutely. We already talked about it. I think the addition of Tyree Landrum plus the – I'm trying to find the right word to describe what I'm trying to say. I think that some of the guys who are more on the outside of that core group are going to really come into their own here in the second half of the season and the start of serious conference play. Guys coming off the bench like Michael Alvarez, Eric Godey, uh, obviously Eric Jennings has been contributing as a sophomore. And so we'll see how that goes. Ben Maynard is really deadly from the perimeter. He's got to continue the hot hand. And so I think the pieces are there. The coaching is there. It's about coming together as a team consistency cons playing consistent not playing down to the level of the Correct. team you're playing like that merced mm -hmm. lost the other day and just playing poets basketball you're going to give up a lot of points but you're going to score a lot of points as well so you get the effective turnovers when you can you make the late shots and you're good from the line and i think these poets have a great shot to compete in the conference they definitely do and as long as they stay out of foul trouble dylan Irwin and tyree landrum if they stay out of foul trouble they will do some damage in the conference. But that's only if they can do that. Because if they just start fouling, which they do, they have to sit the bench. And that brings in Ben Maynard. That brings in Richard Kay, who's a freshman. You know, so there's guys that or I mean, Richard Kay might be a transfer here, actually. But bringing in guys that don't have the experience, you know, to play at this kind of level. And the, and the height and size-wise of Richard Kay is not going to match up, especially Ben Maynard. He's a skinny guy. You know, he's a shooter. He doesn't like to go in and bang on the board. No, not at all. Tyree's the only guy who can really do that. Dylan, Dylan Irwin, Irwin to too. a lesser degree, but he yeah. doesn't have that same Correct. edge that Tyree has. And I, will wanna, I do want to interject and say this. I think the Poets have a chance to surprise a lot of the top teams in the Definitely. conference. When we were out at that Chapman game doing the broadcast, every coach from every other team, was there to recruit and uh, scar excuse me to scout nobody's recruiting at an active college game and i think that what they saw set a certain 
precedent in their mind for what is the poets are going to bring to the floor this year. I so hope we'll they're going to take it take it easy. I hope that's they think no, we're going to be saying. easy. I'm I think they are. I think we're going to surprise a lot yeah. of teams on the first run mm-hmm. that we haven't already played. We've already played Redlands and Chapman, so they know what to expect or not. And then these other teams are going to get a good taste of poet basketball here in the next month and a half. And uh, my prediction would be a third or fourth seed for the Poets to get into the, uh, the Yeah, playoffs. I think they're going to make it. Cal Lutheran's going to be very good game next Saturday, doubleheader. Ooh, make sure you stay tuned for that game because what that's going to be a big one. Network, WCPoets.com. I'm on the call. That's right. You're going to be there. And hopefully uh, RC Cola will be up there with you. According to RC Cola this morning, he's saying that he's probably the best color commentator ever at Weir College. You know, him and Zick together, the best duo ever here for sports broadcasting. I mean, how many color commentators have we had in the history of Whittier College? That's true. I wish I could do more of it. You know, I really do miss it. You know, the more I could do it, you know, I think I would do okay. But, you know, Rob Coleman loves basketball. He knows the game. He's definitely very knowledgeable about the sport. That's what makes him so good with you as you're um, the play-by-play guy. And you always will be, and he's always excited to be up there with you, Tyler. So he's always giving you mad props for doing a great job with the uh, broadcasting stuff. So well done to you. Um, Moving on. Darlene McCracken, okay? Unsung hero for the athletic department. Yeah, let our viewers and listeners know what's up with Darlene, who Darlene is, and why she's so important. Yeah, so Darlene McCracken has worked in the athletic department for 20-plus years. She's been at Whittier College for 46 years, working in admissions, the registrar, um, financial aid. She's worked everywhere, and she's been here 46 years of dedicated service, and she's done a tremendous job. And she's actually retiring this week. So she's actually uh, going to be moving up to Oregon to be with her grand, her uh, granddaughter and her daughters as well. And they're going to move up to a house up there that they're building. And she's going to be able to spend time and relax and see her granddaughter grow up. Uh, she's married up there now, and her daughters live up there too. So it's going to be a great family affair, something that she needs to do now. And it, it's come point in time that it's perfect timing for her to do it. And she's her last days is coming Friday, and we're throwing a big party for her at El Cholo in La Habra on Sunday at six. Are they and sponsoring the show? They got a shout out there. El, El Cholo. Cholo, El Cholo, La Habra, free burritos, free burritos, margaritas. Uh, <coughs> oh, margaritas! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a 21 plus broadcast. You're 21 right. 21 plus margaritas, broadcast. El Cholo. <laughs> Too many margaritas. Yeah, Lance, right. Lance has a couple of margaritas already finished right. here in the studio, folks. So yeah. uh, please, uh, p- <laughs> please ignore his uh, <laughs> drunken coughing. <coughs> but yeah, are you Darlene, gonna be okay? I'll, I'll, take I'll over. be okay. I'll be okay. I can read the card. Dar- Darlene, McC- <laughs> Darlene McCracken. So retiring after 46 years, tremendous job. We wish her all the lo- uh, best of luck in the in future years to come. I hope she can get some golf in. You know, when she, she golfs? retires. No, she doesn't. I golf, was going to say, everybody golfs in the athletic department. Good but God. She loves the Lakers. She'll always be watching them. Maybe she'll have to pick up a team, new team up there. Uh, uh, look, at, look at the Trailblazers. My God. They're doing great. We, we'll, we'll have to save that for another yeah, show. Right? But So, again, Darlene, thank you for doing such a great job in the athletic department. We're definitely going to be missing you. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to listen to this broadcast later on during the week. But I don't think she'd want to. I don't think so. It might, you know, Terry, we're going to have a huge crowd at this party, this retirement party for her on Sunday. We have no, about 70 people. 70 people. I think she could spend her time much better than listen to us jabber, jib, jibber jabber for 30 minutes. That's true. But this is a great time for us doing it. She's but, a classy hey, lady. You know, she is a classy lady. She's helped both of us out um, being here in athletics. We've, you know, me being here, you know, six, seven years already at Whittier. She's the and gatekeeper. She is. She, she's done an amazing job. She does it all. She does it all. So now our goal is to get. You know, right now we're getting a couple of the coaches to help out and solidify some things, the vans, the refs, the American Express card, doing all the things that she does and trying to balance it all out before we start looking maybe for someone new. Or, you know, they keep doing it and, you know, do it that way. So we'll see. We'll see what lies ahead. But, again, Darlene, thank you for 46 46 years. years. That's twice my life. Yeah, 46 years. So she's worked at Whittier for two of my lifetimes. Uh If you think about it like that, that blows the mind. Unbelievable. Oh. Amazing job. Props to her. So, this comes up before our break. We're going to do Zix Pick now, or Zix Picks when we come back from the break? Well, how much time do we have? We've been on the air for 26 well, we got minutes. Zix we got pick, four minutes. We got Zix Pick left, and then we got the rundown coming up after that to wrap up the show. So, maybe we take a quick little break. Yeah, and we'll take a quick break we'll here. We'll take I'll a pull quick up, break uh, here after our five good minutes. 
Was that five? I think that was ten. It might have been ten, but it's okay. We'll come back here, take a little break, and we'll be back with you. Wait, for keep, keep talking while I pull up this station. So Zix pick. Here. So we're gonna come back with Zix pick, and then we're gonna do this new rundown section where we're gonna go through and one word answers for some of these topics here that we have, and Tyler's gonna be doing that as well when we come back from this break. So, are we going? Are we ready? We're ready. So okay, we're break. gonna take a quick little count, break. Count me in. Count me in. Three, two, one. Okay, three, two, one, break. One, do they call it? Can you call it? There's no poetry, but there's no kids. What? I'm Paul McCartney, leader of the Beatles. I'm Ringo. Hey, Paul, what's your favorite radio station? Well, it's Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Well, it's skateboardradio.com. And we're back after our quick little break. Yeah, that was nice. A little uh, Jerry Seinfeld was nice enough to join us in the studio. Also, had Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr here. So many thanks to coming down for Jerry. Jerry coming down. I think he lives in L.A. He didn't say he was in in so fast and ran out. But uh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Seinfeld, Mr. McCartney, Mr. Starr. We may very much appreciate you supporting Poets and Thirty. And we're back now. What you've yeah, all been back. waiting for? Zix pick of the week. I don't think that sounded very good in the uh, no in the microphone. I heard a lot of static in the headphones. Oh boy! Okay, we're uh, gonna we'll, work we'll on that work one. On that. I gotta get a drum roll sounder or some sort of really fun noise. Yeah. Maybe I could just get you singing a song. Oh, that's better. Is that better? I like the keys, but what keys? is that? Anyways, we'll figure it out. Know. We'll talk about that in the next production meeting. Anyways, Zix pick of the week, the first of 2014, which is a very dubious honor. First of the new year, it's gonna go to the freshman. Priscilla Rodriguez, P-Rod, on the women's basketball team. She has been the shining star for the Lady Poets this year. We talked so much about Danica Navales Luke to Priscilla Rodriguez really coming up as the next big thing for women's basketball. 72 points in the last four games. She had 18 points, four rebounds, and five assists against Concordia on January 4th. I don't think I have to tell you that was a loss for the Poets, but yep. Priscilla Tight did great. Yep. Uh, also, she is averaging... 10.4 points per game overall, 12.3 points per game in the conference. 30, she's shooting 37% from the field, 74.4% from the free throw line. That's the second best to Danica, but Danica shoots free throws half as much as Priscilla does, so you do the math yourself, folks. And just one more comment about Priscilla. She had a career-high 23 points on the 29th of December in the Purple and Gold Poets Classic against Pacific Union. Not much of a career to go off of, as she is only a freshman, so that number is only going to get higher. Oh, and one more thing. Priscilla averaging 23.8 points per 40 minutes. Wow. Which is a, a stat I think gets overlooked because obviously Definitely. no player is on the floor for the entire game. So for every full game, she's scoring over 20 points. P-Rod, Priscilla Rodriguez, she's going tomorrow well night against Occidental at 7.30. That game is live on the Whittier College Sports Network, so be sure to check that out to see P-Rod and company do their thing. Let's do it. Priscilla? I hope it's a good thing. We need a victory. Yeah, we definitely do for women's basketball. And Priscilla, I hope you tear it up tomorrow night again. Because right now, five straight games that she has double figures. So she's on a tear right now. Last but not least, we've now moved on. Oh, and by the way, if you want to check out all the Zix pick, go on to the WCPoets.com website. There is a scroll bar on the main page. Go through them. And you'll find the Zix pick of the week. Yeah, right underneath the main picture that Correct. has all the stories that Lance worked so hard to put up. Why, thank you. Yeah, you're <laughs> welcome. I just wanted to publicly recognize that fact. <laughs> Scroll through them. You'll see some that say Poets in 30, some that say Hall of Fame. There's one that says Under Armour. There's one that says, like, statistics. Just Random a bunch one. of stuff. Live just stats, click through live it. video feeds, everything. And, and the only one you really want to click on is the Zix pick one anyway. So go to that, <laughs> click it. You'll see the headshots of all the Zix picks from previous weeks as well as why they made the Zix pick rankings. Correct. And so check so it out. Yeah, so uh, when no, we get no, back no, up no to the office, to I'm going to I'm going to add Priscilla Rodriguez's uh, information when we head back up to the office today and uh, we'll go from there. So, we've now made it to the final part of the show. Thank God. Called the rundown. Does it feel? Do we go over thirty minutes usually? Uh, no. Normally, we're at thirty-one oh nine right and now. 10 okay. And eleven. Gotcha. Okay. Well, rundown. This is how we're going to do it. Okay. One word answers 
for all of these individuals that we chose, okay? These topics right here. Okay, you ready? Let's do this. Rundown. The first one, men's basketball. Resurgent. Is that your word of the day? No, that's not. I, I okay. don't have one, actually. Okay. Resurgent. I like that. Okay, I get to read the next one to you. Oh, okay. We're, we're sharing here. Uh, one word, Tyree Landrum. Presence. Big presence. Like Christmas presents? No, presence. Oh, with P -R a C. Yeah, with a C. I'm just teasing. I knew yeah, you right? the first Big time. presence. Big presence. Or you can go shop blocker. Either one. That's two words. Okay, next one. Mark Jensen. Gets it. G th that's two words, too, but you did it first. Gets it. G-E-T-S space I-T. He gets it. Like, he gets it. He gets basketball. He gets recruiting. He gets talking to his players in a way that they can understand and connecting with them. I've been impressed with that since I was a student, so Mark Jensen gets it. Uh, last one here. We're skipping this one from earlier. And this is for you in honor of 46 years of service, Lance. Darlene. Darlene, we all love you here at Whittier College. <laughs> I'm That's not going one word. Loved. That's loved. 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 Okay. loved. Classy. S stay classy, San Diego, right? I saw Anchorman 2 over the break. So it did was I. Good. I loved it. I thought they were trying a little too hard to recreate, recreate the magic from the first because that <laughs> would be impossible. But there are some funny jokes. There were good ones. I was put on this earth to do two things, have salon quality hair and read the news. <laughs> hey, just like what, what we do. Yeah, I need to work on my hair. Yeah. I don't know. You got a good little haircut? It's a little yeah. better than the curls here. There you uh, go. Coach Rizzo said Cotter's Landing If for you <laughs> old folks. I don't know what that is. Some sort of TV show. Rizzo always has something to say about it. Of course. Me. Hey, but by the way, you get to go to the alumni game. Yeah, I'm going to be. Yes. For those of you who want to see me make a fool of myself, <laughs> uh, all two of the listeners who are tuned in live now, one of them is my parents. One <laughs> of them is the office here inside of kpoortradio.com. Hopefully we'll catch you guys on the playback. That's, what I'm, that's where that's I'm hoping we get to listen. That's what we get. On YouTube.com slash the Whittier College Sports Network. Or the WCSN, I should say. Uh, yeah, come watch me play in the alumni game February 2nd, I think, or February 1st. First weekend in February. It'll be the first time I've swung a bat in two years. Mr. and Mrs. Zickel, we hope to see you up here yeah, watching first, the game. First time that I feel will be fielding any sort of baseball off of a live bat since I was a junior in college. That was three years ago. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. But, uh, Lance, that's it for today. Anything else you've got that you want to say? No, that's it. You know, uh, let's. Winter, winter sports going at it. Hopefully we'll uh, get some wins. But letting everyone know we're not doing Pose and 30 next week. We're going to do it every other week now. I'm going to be at the NCAA convention next week, so I wouldn't be here anyways. But the following week, we have a game that night, um, that evening against Redlands, I believe. So it's going to be Pose and 30 that day. So, so yeah, every other week. Now, every other week. Not that it matters to the people listening because, like I said, I of mean, course, nobody, nobody, nobody tunes in live. But everyone's got better things to do, like eat lunch. Why yeah. would they want their lunch to be and that's spoiled where we're by going. us just yapping? That's where we're going right now. We're going to lunch upstairs. We're going to lunch upstairs. upstairs. It's, uh, it's so a that's right. So that's going to sign us out here for Poets and 30, your Poets Sports Talk Show. I'm Lance Franey. This is Tyler Zickel. Yep. And we'll catch you in a couple weeks here, right here in K-Poet Radio Studio, kpoetradio.com.